Relatives, good to see everybody again. Uh, again, my name is Elijah Hopkins. We're streaming at you live from Fort Peck Community College here at Wachinja uh, Wakba. I want to thank everybody for following us on the Facebook and joining us on the, the webinar for our weekly uh, Buffalo Chasers podcast. 
And then as usual, I'd like to ask uh, Dekshi uh, Wamnisha Gay if you would share a prayer with us in a good way. Diana Chikushni. Can't hear you, Dex. Now, can you hear me now? Oh, hear you now. Watch yeah, it. Okay. Amitaki api dayaya hipi ushima ala kchewi chasha mialo. Ambe tukile mi chante tau agla ke nahan ampe chuza pelo. Ohe chajemita wamnisha ge doba imachi api. Welcome, my relatives. And again, uh, we welcome you to the podcast here, the Buffalo Chasers uh, Fort Pitt Community College um, uh, room. And we enjoy ourselves in a good way, sharing this opportunity, taking advantage of this opportunity to share with all of you a different way of uh, thinking, a different way of life, a different way of getting things done, and but yet realizing some of the similar goals that you all have. And that's a good, healthy lifestyle. So with that, we're going to go to humble ourselves to, to this uh, higher power, the spiritual energy, this God, this uh, whatever you refer to them as uh, in a good way. So, have pity on me and help me out, my relatives, if you would, please. Mushia ken ni taki api unchi makao mani wayazapi. Ogia chavo ushi wi chalapo. Mushia ke ni taki api unchi makao mani chante ioksi cha omani. O wi chaki apo ushi wi chalapo. Ake naha tukashila na wakantanka. Kiksi apo mi taki api winukshalapi na wi chakshalapi. Wakayanjap wi hukshilapi un chinchalapi. Kushkapi we Kushkapi, Chanku washte unk upi, we chose any unk upi, Okia wo ushi we chalapo. Atu Kashila na wakantanka gixiapo mitaki api agichita uyate ki zuya ekta, we chasha bile na wea bile, naha chanku washte unk upi, mushiake. Atu Kashila na wakantanka gixiapo mitaki api naha. Oyate Oyasi Chanku Luta Aga Omani O Chakyapo. Again, we come to you on this day, my grandfathers and my grandmothers that helped me as I was searching for my guidance and direction as it relates to the my, my purpose and dedication as I spend time here on this Mother Earth. We come to you in a good way on this day as you intercede on behalf of that spiritual energy to help us understand the importance of. Uh, again, leaving good tracks on this red road that we follow, this road of understanding that is, we're guided by you and all those things that help out in a good way, in a spiritual manner. So we come to you on this day and ask you again to help us understand our strengths, help us understand the importance of our weaknesses and developing them so that we can become a good force in our communities and help one another with a good heart and good mind and a good strong spirit as we continue to walk in this vessel we refer to as our body and that we can take care of it as we eat properly, we exercise accordingly and we look after one another in a good way. We keep ourselves clean and, and helpful and, and always understanding the importance of that appearance as it relates to others so that we can continue to represent what it is that you have in store for us as we prepare ourselves to someday soon make that transition to the other side not to fear this mystery of death, but to prepare for it. So we come in that way on this day to share these good things, these values that you have presented us with, the values that we learn should be important to those of us that believe that we're indigenous to the North American continent. So with that, we come to you with a good heart, good mind, good spirit, letting you know all is as well as it could be on this day. So we'd like to thank you for all of the leadership here at the Fort Peck Community College, all of the leadership on the Fort Peck Assiniboine and Sioux tribes and the government as to now is a very trying time for them. And we ask that you continue to help us to understand the importance of their involvement in our lives in one way or another. So with that, I want to thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the recent rain that you brought to us. And thank you for this uh, beautiful time of year as we refer to it as fall time. 
in a good way. Thank you for all these good things that you bring towards us. So, uh, relatives, what we try to do every week before we get into our discussion here with uh, Mr. Uh, Tommy Christian is um, we want to incentivize participation. So, that how we do that is we try to have a, a drawing weekly, a few different items, and uh, in our own way, try to uh, recognize individuals that uh, participate and engage with our, our podcast here. So, it's our version of a little bit of a, a wopida, as they say, Gyabado. We have some jackets and we have a uh, Kindle Fire tablet. And so the winner of our tablet is none other than Joyce Williams. <laughs> dinner, dinner, chicken dinner. Showing the love to Joyce. And again, thank you, Joyce, for uh, participating. Uh, you can redeem that prize over here at Student Services, the War Eagle Vision Building. Give us a call if you are uh, out of the service area and you can call 406-768-6370 and ask for uh, Darcy St. Germain and give her your, uh, your mailing address and she'll hook you up. Then also we have a, what I like to refer to as a Fort Peck Community College Buffalo Chasers Letterman jacket. So you basically letter in being Indian Buffalo Chaser. So the winner of that jacket is Emily Carol Patch, winner in a chicken dinner. Yeah, Dexter's rocking a jacket there. He was one of the first recipients of that Buffalo Chasers Letterman jacket. He, Ahana, he lettered Ahana. So, um, so anyways, uh, Emily, uh, congratulations to you as well. You can re uh, redeem your prize, I guess, over here at Student Services, 406-768-6370. And uh, we can mail that out to you if you're not around. So, Again, relatives, smash that love button. Give us a like. Give us a share. Yeah. Next week's drawing. And so uh, we'll try and uh, announce those winners at the, the beginning of our, our discussion here. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over the reins over to you to the, uh, the co-host here, uh, Mr. Tommy Christian. Uh, looks like uh, Dexy Bullhead is un unable to join us today anyways, um, but he might be able to sneak in later on. So. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, my nephew, Dayai Chano Hatch to a Lawopila Chichia Tushka. Oh, man, we're moving things right along. We kind of had technical difficulties last week, and uh, it's hard to get Earl on and hooked up and whatnot, but we, he got in there a little bit, so that's good. And again, today he's kind of uh, taking care of some doctor's appointments and various other things back. He, I, he called me earlier. And he was in Mandan. So he said he may be jumping on here later on. So he may come into the picture here in just a bit too. So just kind of bear with us. But you know, in, in the meantime, Toshka, I've been having discussions almost all week about um, uh, w w what will it take? You know, and, and because it's, it's a, we try to remain apolitical and apersonal. Eh? And at the same time, to, to discipline ourselves to, to get away from those political agendas, whatever they may be, and, and to keep from getting caught up into those personal agendas for the sake of uh, talking about ourselves and how good I am, virtual signal on how good of a guy I am and some of the great things I, I done in my life. <laughs> I wish. Yeah. But uh, in those things, uh, we come to realize the importance of why we've been speaking uh, in the manner in which we speak, uh, and I'm talking about uh, a lot of this character development. You know, the, if you stop and you really think about it historically, um, this value system was our way of life. It's a spiritual way of life. You know, in, in the uh, political arena, they have a thing that they call the separation of church and state. Okay? But, and so in a school, you can't go into a school and take advantage of a captive audience by influencing them based on your denomination. Now, on the other hand, uh, our way of life is one of spirituality. It, it's not guided by a doctrine. It's not, doesn't have rules or regulations. It's a, it's a very spiritual, uh, critically thought out process, uh, 
again, we understand the importance of that, that uh, individuality, but at the same time, exercising this opportunity to be understanding of individualism. You know, individuality is I, me, my, but what we live and what we aspire to is the individualism, which is us, we, and them. And so as we do these things, we try to perpetuate an attitude of um, commonality amongst the who, who, nupa, the two-legged. Eh? And, and again, uh, if you heard me uh, as I shared these, uh, this wachekia, this uh, heartfelt cry, for the sake of others. I didn't speak of myself. I didn't think of myself. I want, want to do what I do in a good way and, and in a personal way, thanking the spiritual energy, or however you interpret that, for, for the good things that he provides, not only for me, although I was sharing with that in a prayerful way, I, I was uh, uh, wishing, I was thanking them for those things on behalf of others, on behalf of those that uh, uh, may be having a tough day, may be dealing with issues of, of a, a traumatic experience, uh, such as the death of a loved one. And we're all trying to deal with um, the, these uh, issues of, of, of loss and mourning as it relates to uh, that recent death, loss of a loved one. And, and how do we get over that? How do we deal with that? Are we so numb and callous that it doesn't affect us no more? Actually, in Indian country, um, it affects us even more so because, you know, mitake oasi, we, we say that for a reason because we believe we're all related. And so when you lose one of your relatives, although they may not even know you, you're still uh, have that as an Indian, as a First Nations person, you still have that attitude of that's my relative. And so you, you kind of grieve that, that, that loss in that way. People find that hard to understand but when your thought process is such that you have a commitment to this wowa chida, they call it the faith and the belief, then it, you, you have a better understanding of uh, that preparation that we go through to help us uh, not to fear this mystery of death, but to prepare for it. And so that's thinking like an indigenous person. That's, that's getting ready for what it is about to, to happen. Because inevitably, we all must face that. Not to be afraid of it, not to be controlled by that fear, but to be free-spirited enough to go out and live our life to the fullest. You'll hear that time and time again in respects to um, uh, don't be lazy. I always try to do something. Eh? But it, it also refers to uh, be happy. Yushkia na yuchpia. Uh, you know, you live a happy and, and, and a glad life. You're thankful for these things. And, and, and when we were Chekia, when we have this heartfelt cry for the sake of others, we understand the importance of not denying ourselves an opportunity to be, to be joyful. Eh? You know, the smiling or, or, or laughing and enjoying ourselves in that way, in spite of what we've gone through. You know, uh, I had some discussions this week as well with uh, a lot of it had to do with trauma. And uh, the reason for that is uh, I got some individuals attending a meeting trying to deal with the, that drug and alcohol abuse. Eh? And then they called me and asked me for, for some understanding of that. How, how do Indians do that? And I said, well, we recognize the reality of it. And then they, of course, their next, next question is, what is the reality of drugs and alcohol? Drugs and alcohol, if we put it in perspective, it's a symptom. Those two are symptoms of what the real problem is. The real problem is the historical and cultural trauma that indigenous people have went through. And that's not playing the victim. That's just, woe chaki oboman. I walked with the truth. Eh? And in that, uh, I can't treat the alcoholism and the drug abuse as, as something that's the problem because it's not the problem. It's the lack of character development or discipline within one's life to make choices to go in that direction and eventually get addicted. But those choices you make to go in that direction is to numb yourself and, and to create a different reality for you that, that is so superficial 
and, and because you can't deal with the reality that you're living in right now in respects to the trauma that you're going through. Make sense, Toshka? You see, so uh, again, uh, systematically, you know, in Canada, they talk about uh, reconciliation and stuff, and they did a study and whatnot, and, and they call it the reconciliation based on systematic racism, eh? Well, we need to recognize, uh, not as being victims, but for the sake of other people understanding their responsibility in that reconciliation of who and what we are in a culturally responsive manner. Make sense? You see? And so everybody, well, are you blaming us? You know, the non-Indian people. Are you? No, we're not blaming you. We would like for you to acknowledge maybe some of the things that you did by not being culturally oriented as, as who and what we were as a people. And of course, that diversity that we live by, that you failed to accept. And then that's where that come about, that forced assimilation. Eh? And in respects to that, uh, uh, we respected what you were sharing with us under the auspice of Wowi Chaki Obomani, I walk with the truth. We believed you because in our language, we, uh, we, we say what we mean and we mean what we say, so to speak. And so therefore, uh, it's, it's done in a respectful way. Well, you shared with us that uh, this would make us better and it didn't because it denied us a whole uh, avenue avenue of living healthy along our standards and you presented to us a standard that was totally alien to us that it totally had a, a null effect it had no effect on us whatsoever because it took us so much out of our realm and, and our, our coexistence that was intended based on the simulation did not occur because we didn't know how to respond to what you were requesting of us it's not that we were stupid it's just that we never went through that before. And as a result of that, uh, I believe, and I have to assume, but not really an assumption because historically I read some documents to where the people accepted that, but yet didn't understand it. And then as a result of that, the, 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 the non-Indians got offended. They thought we were being ignorant and being uh, and against what they were saying. And we weren't. We just did not understand what they were requesting of us because it was totally alien to our standard of life. And uh, so we just uh, became the stoic Indian and nobody likes to look like they're stupid, but in, in a good way, as we maintained our dignity and our honor, we tried to, to accommodate what you were asking of us. But because it was so alien to us, we, it was hard for us to accept. Because we had our own language, we had our own culture, we had our own value system. <clears throat> and in that, that's where that um, historical and cultural trauma precipitates from. The manifestation of denying people that sort of a thing is really uh, not good for the people. And so once we recognize it, then we realize, uh, you know, what's, what's the um, definition of insanity? doing the same thing over and over again, wishing for a different outcome. Well, that's basically what we've been doing. Well, the, 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 the society that thought they were in control, some people refer to them as the dominant society. I shared, I choose not to use that word because they don't dominate me. But um, in that, they, they, they figured that uh, they had control of us. And in that respect, uh, they didn't. And, you know, in, in their doctrine, uh, they say they have um, dominion over animals. <laughs> That's totally that. This is just an example. That's totally uh, against our nature. We believe we coexist with uh, Wamakashka, all of them. eh? And we just have a place in that circle of life along with them to help us understand what the center is. Chokata Wayaka. When we look at the center, then we'll have a greater understanding of what we're pursuing. And again, in the center, in the very center, is the children. Okay? Our future. Okay? You, you know, you think of it like that. And so 
our, our non-Indian relatives in this uh, colonialized thought process, you know, when I talk about colonialization, you hear all this derogatory stuff about colonialization. Uh, it doesn't ha always have to be referred to as something bad, it, but it's not our way. So to us, it kind of rubs our fur the wrong way. It's an unnatural thing for us to, to, to pursue that, that individuality like that because, oh man, it's, a, it's just about uh, perpetuating that manifestation of uh, in, in, in entitlement or, or, you know, uh, you owe me sort of an attitude. Where's mine? I want mine as opposed to the individualism that uh, understands it. What's in it for us? How are we going to look after the rest of our folks? Kind of like that. It, it was totally against that. It was totally not in respects to how it is that, that we were um, brought up. And then, of course, uh, some of our, our more contemporary uh, First Nations people don't understand why they have, why they think like that. Well, because I have a strong belief in genetic memory, and that means that it's in your blood. Uh, that's the way your great 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 grandparents thought. That's the way your great great grandparents thought. That's the way your great grandparents thought. That's the way your grandparents thought. And so it's in your blood to naturally naturally evolve with that sort of compassion and empathy for all things. That's what it means to be culturally uh, responsive to who and what you are. But what they what the the, the society that thought they were in control not only having dominion over animals, but dominion over um, uh, their, their, their subjects, eh? And that wasn't the case. I'm sorry, we have too much dignity and honor to maintain the integrity of who we are as a people to succumb to that. And so in that, we developed ways to protect that center. And that center was protected by um, the older folks that were sitting at the center, the Winuk Shalapi, Wichak Shalapi, Nyotaka, Chokata, Hecha, they developed the superstition okay, to protect the center. But they knew the truth. The ones at the center knew the truth. So they threw out there some superstitions to make people afraid to stay away from what the center was. In other words, to stay away from the truth. That was intended to protect the center now as you gain that understanding those that are out there that wanted to access the center you know I, and it was shared with me that you know not everybody can handle the truth and it's been proven time and time again because you have to learn how to deal with those things based on this that development of one's character you have to be strong enough to be able to sit in the center and protect what that center consists of. And so it's a learning experience to sit there. And in that, that superstition keeps the weak ones back, eh? Because they're so afraid, eh? They haven't learned enough to be a, like a Kogi Pishni Bidakwiapi. Don't be afraid, my relatives. But yet we say that, but we know that they're afraid because uh, they think uh, our Indian medicine is voodoo and <laughs> stuff. We go in that little voodoo hut and do that stuff. I'm sorry, but we don't do that. <clears throat> and so based on that forced assimilation uh, where the people that felt that they were in control utilized these superstitions to identify what it meant to be of an Indian or an indigenous belief, part of an indigenous belief system. Like uh, if you, if you um, do those ceremonies wrong, you're going to hurt your family as if, uh, you know, no way. Because the reason I say that, I share that with all of you, is because all the stuff we've been talking about, all the st stuff we've been discussing up to this point, in spite of the fact that uh, it's been somewhat redundant, you know, the, 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 the repetition of some of the stories, the repetition of some of the thought processes, the repetition of the manner in which we share them is intended. Because again, what that gives um, 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 credence to is uh, that, that, that uh, uh, what do they call it? That, that, that common sense way of learning. That, that, 
what do they call it? What do they call it? There's linear learning and what is the other one? Abstract. That's what it was. That's the word I'm looking for. Abstract learning process where it's experiential teaching, hands-on. And so that repetition represents that. Eh? And so we're not really trying to convince you how to a paradigm shift that's taking place. How there's a guy to do. And so that 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 uh, that that repetition has a purpose in recognizing the importance of uh, abstract learning. And as we do this, uh, that's re that's in reference to if you want to put it in intellectual terms, you could refer it as cultural responsiveness. Okay? And so as you continue to do these things, then we start recognizing, am I part of the problem by trying to make Indians white? Or am I part of the solution to understanding their cultural value system? And yes, they are different. They're not wrong. They're just different. And respecting that difference and reciprocating what we shared with them in regards to who and what we are and reciprocating that respect by acknowledging that this uh, uh, way of life does exist based on natural law, not a doctrine of dogma, okay? but more of a free spirited way. And so when I mentioned the separation of church and state, that's why that becomes a political agenda. But in our way of life, because it's a way of life, it, it, it doesn't apply to, to um, uh, bringing it into schools and sharing it because what it does, it helps you to develop on a personal level uh, uh, your own character so that you can become a stronger force in your community, a more positive force in dealing with some of these things and helping the weak and, 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 and uh, with the strengths that you have. And in some areas, you may be weak and so you're depending on others to help you in those, those arenas. So, you know, that, that's what it means to be culturally responsive, to understanding that diversity that exists out there was uh, uh, a God-given purpose, eh? It was purposefully done. Uh, my, my dad used to tell me all the time, shit, if we were all the like, it would be so boring, eh? <laughs> Thank God for diversity, man. But uh, uh, in that respect, and that's so true. And that came from somebody, the, the understanding that I share with you, some of the stuff, that, the, the concepts that I share, uh, I was taught by uh, old people. We know Chalapi, now we talk Chalapi. We won't speak yet. Hey, me My teachers were the old ladies and old men that I hold dear to my heart. Those were my teachers, and I had entrusted in them uh, an opportunity to take me down these different ways of, of understanding and learning and, and uh, realizing, hey, I, I, I can do this. I accept it easier. I, I, I live much more comfortably. I'm so happy now. Why? And then initially when I, taught how to, when I, when I was taught how to be happy, I felt so guilty, right? Eh? <laughs> and, and and they asked me why are you feeling so guilty i said well friend i'm not supposed to be this happy i'm not supposed to be this comfortable i'm an indian <laughs> but uh, our value system is based on standards that are different as well and once those standards are recognized then we have an opportunity with uh you know we don't have much but what little we have we'll share with you you see and and so we don't share to the point to where we're diminished of anything we share just enough because we may have a little extra or share it with you we have no problem with that we're not aspiring to acquiring anything or any material stuff like that we're more into sharing giving and, and, and kind of helping us understand because that helps us develop that virtue of generosity and when you give you're really in, an, in a true Dakota Lakota way Nakota way uh, you should give your best, eh? Something that's dearest to you, you you give it. And, and oh, you know, I could give away, I could give away a whole piece of junk if I wanted to. Here, take us there, there. Oh, there, I'm exercising my generosity. It don't mean nothing to you. But on the other hand, in that sense of uh, that virtue, that that virtue of generosity becoming real in your life, if you give away your best then it affects you, okay? And then in that, once you give it away, it's not yours no more. You can't say nothing about doing anything or anything like that, and you just got to let it go. That was your best you give away. So the person that's receiving it, recognize that 
and they say, oh man, that's, this is beautiful. This is so nice. Oh man. And then they feel guilty for accepting it. <laughs> but again, the, the recipient is just a, as important as the, as the giver, because again, they have to be strong enough to be able to accept the gift like that, understanding that what they're doing is affording you an opportunity to exercise your generosity as a virtue, as opposed to just giving shit away. <laughs> you know what I mean? Getting your house cleaned out and throwing away all your junk. <laughs> but it's different in Indian country. We give away our best. You see very beautiful star quilts being given away. You see very beautiful Pendleton blankets that are given away. You see very beautiful weapons given away. You see the best horses given away. It's not some old plug that's got hooves the size of a career or an elephant hooves or something like that. But you see very stout and strong animals being shared and given away. Feathers tied on their mane and stuff in, in representation of uh, the honor that they have for the shunka. Those are the things that are given away with a, with a good heart. And in that, you've done your best, eh? And, uh, you know, the, like one of the things is, is uh, we've been inhibited to do this because we get caught up in that acquisition of stuff. I want this, I want that. I want, how much stuff you got is what they, they value you by. Well, you know, you, you know, to most people nowadays in a contemporary way, vehicles are very, very important to us, eh? especially for travelers. Guess what? At Apollo over here in Fort Berthold, they give away two brand new vehicles. How in the heck? Who, who's stupid enough to give away a car? <laughs> Indians. <laughs> the reason for that is that's what's important to those that were participating. The men got, got a uh, vehicle and the women got a vehicle, but they had to win it eh? uh, through a draw. But the, the important aspect of that is that's what's important. We adapted. That's what's important, especially to those dancers, the men and the women dancers, because they travel so much. It was the most important thing to them was a vehicle. So the community got together and they realized we're going to give this from our heart, the, the generosity that uh, uh, is expressed there. And people more look at, well, how much does that car cost? Not at how good is that car going to, how many miles is that car going to take these dancers to continue to go out and be able to express themselves and make people feel good? Whatever that is. Trying to dance happy and dance glad. Eh? That's what they do. That's what they, they've been taught. And in that, they have to travel all over Indian country. Well, that vehicle can afford them an opportunity to travel safely, to travel in a good vehicle, not have to worry about breakdowns, have good tires on there. You see what that does? And so in that, that's what was important. That what is that what is important to the nation of people in that dignified, honorable act, those people in Fort Belknap, or Fort Berthold, excuse me, sustain their integrity by doing an act like that not worried about the cost of the, the vehicles, but more concerned about the health and welfare and the safety of those visitors that came and were participating. Is that cool or what? You see, that, that's, that's culturally oriented. That's culturally responsive to how we do these things. And, and that's not even an extreme. That's, that's not even, uh, because there's really no extreme in respect to giving things away. Because again, as, you, as we do these things, we understand the importance of, we're not trying to accumulate anything, but, and of course, uh, we've got to pay the bills and we've got to look after ourselves and all that good stuff. But going beyond that and understanding, it's unconditional. It's a love that's unconditional. They love their powwow so much, they had money to do this, so they did it. But at the same time, those were all given unconditionally. And so that's where... <coughs> we come to understand the importance of this character development that we've been talking about in our podcast. And now during times like this, 
you know, I can foresee where podcasts will become very beneficial, not, not podcasts, not only podcasts, but Zoom meetings, because we're learning how Indian country is learning how to Zoom. They're learning how to communicate without having to travel 10, 12 hours just to get to someplace. But we can, tra- we can talk to one another face to face and continue these conversations about the diversity that exists out there, but the respect that these uh, ceremonies or these protocols are due, eh? And so we need to understand the importance of things such as that. And we need to realize cultural responsiveness is, in Indian country, should be first and foremost. And you know that would alleviate a lot of the problems within our own communities. It would take an, an opportunity for us to address some of these symptoms such as drugs and alcohol, you know, some of these uh, antisocial behaviorisms of our young children. And, and again, it can become a way of life again. I live like that, you know, 24 seven, 365 days, I'm, a, I'm an Indian. And uh, again, I live very comfortably. Uh, I don't have much, but what little I have, hey, I'm, I'll share it with you. But at the same time, I'm happy, I'm glad. And in my preparation, I got way more past than I do have future. <laughs> I'm at that age, but uh, I'm preparing to make that journey. Eh? But I'm, I'm not afraid of it. And I hope when the time comes that I don't fear it to the point to where uh, something, eh? but I can accept it eh? as my, um, my family do. My son, my, my, my niece, my daughter, uh, uh, my sister, all of them. And again, they, they, people, people have a way of um, looking down on things like that. Hey, death is so scary. Because again, we need to go beyond that fear and just prepare. Because again, based on our understandings of this cultural responsive attitude, it's been shared with many amongst our people that there's been visits to the other side by people that are still walking this earth that we can touch that are still in their, in their body. And they come back with very, very spiritual stories. And, oh, that's not true. That didn't. It did. And the stories are so consistent that you cannot deny them. And in that, that's the way I believe. I accept that. And so I know that... Uh, in, in our way of life that will afford us an opportunity to make preparation based on our development of our character to try to be good to everything and everybody as well as we can, as well as I can. And so in that, um, it affords you an opportunity to, to make a good choice. And that's why we don't talk against uh, Christianity, Muslims or anything, because when they claim to be these things, what that tells us is that they have a base or a foundation for their decision-making process that hopefully has some morals and ethics in it. And so when they make their decision, they're guided. Makes sense, Toshka? And, and so we don't argue about the denomination of somebody. We don't fight and, and try to defend our way as much as we really enjoy that reciprocity of, of help helping them understand our way as well and incorporating all of those good things about who and what we are not making not calling us devil worshipers or heathens or pagans or anything like that but to accept who and what we are that would be a culturally responsive attitude in respects to coming together and in our podcast here hopefully exemplifies the importance of that diversity that exists out there, that it, that it can become uh, 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 an enhancement and enrichment for the sake of the growth of our children. You see? Our future. And so in that process, we, we continue to live in that way, but we don't tell people anything as much as we enjoy sharing with them. And so if you think about it, let's say... Um, where was I at? Uh, that, let, let's say when I was on the council, if I went to Congress, Congress would let me go up there and speak for 
10 minutes. In other words, <laughs> got to say everything real fast and talk real fast and get it all done. All these 1800 years of uh, oppression, I got to say it in 10 minutes. That, that's not fair to us, you see? So in that process, we have to understand that system and then kind of bring it down, make it real concise so that we can express what it is that we went there for without having to explain or legitimize our existence in respect to that. You know, the sad thing is um, when, when in, in their, their document, their doctrine, they say they have um, um, dominion over animals. Did, I don't know how many people really understand that we're, we're treated as such, the indigenous people. We have enrollment numbers. We have blood quantum. We also are under the Department of Interior, just like um, the, the, the spotted owl, uh, the wolves, the bears, uh, all those animals that are almost extinct, the, the, the bald eagle. And so, so, you know, to be culturally responsive and to re reciprocate that respect that we're asking of is we're not playing the victim here. What we're saying is, please understand our plight. Understand who and what we are as a person and some of the pitfalls that we have to go through in spite of that regulatory authority, authority or that bureaucracy that we have to contend with under the auspice of wardship, eh? Because we're considered wards of the government. Even though we, we were placed on these uh, internment camps that they refer to as reservations, uh, hey, it's, it's, uh, it's something to be desired, I guess you could say, to live on a reservation. But I was born and raised on a reservation. I don't know no other way. And I'm comfortable here. I'm happy here. And the reason that I'm happy here and I'm comfortable here, because my people are buried here. Okay? And then uh, when I pass, I'm going to go be buried in, in uh, Mr. Wasis, uh, Saskatchewan, because my boys are buried over there. And so, again, that's, that's uh, kind of how it goes, because I got my relatives already established here, but I stay here because they're here. And so when I go, uh, when I die, I'm going to go be buried in uh, Mr. Wasis, Saskatchewan. And uh, I'll, I'll be with my sons, which I feel is only right by me. But that's my belief system. That's the way I believe. But see, that would be considered a culturally responsive attitude in respect to acknowledging the diversity of uh, our European relatives as well as our indigenous relatives. And so there's really no room for disrespect unless... Uh, you're a car dealer <laughs> and he's trying to rip you off. I don't like car dealers. Although my, my relative, uh, uh, Dave, <laughs> Dave was, was, a, was a, a car dealer. He'd look after me, though. He wouldn't rip me off. So Dave Parsley was, used to work for Dodge. And he'd get me these good deals on these cars. Man, but, uh, not, so I don't have nothing against car dealers. Not all of them, but most of them try to rip you off. Man. But anyway. Getting back, <laughs> that's a joke. I'm teasing, of course. Of course, I have the highest respect for Dave Parsley and my, uh, my relatives on that side. But um, again, you know, we need to understand the importance of what I'm speaking to and the point that I'm making based on the principle of uh, trauma, the effects of trauma, how it's not only affected us as the, the people that had to endure it, but also the, the oppressors of our, our European family that learned how to continue that attitude. They learned that's a learned behavior. And if they ever went back in their history, they would find that uh, they used to live just like us. They lived in teepees. They hunted off the land. You know, in Europe, they did that if they went back far enough. Okay? And so in, in stuff like that, I mean, there's no room for what's going on today in respects to the politics that are going on, the personal agendas, and I tease about car dealers, but the, I'm speaking about people that are greedy and just want to acquire and access all these things all just for themselves. And here we are talking about, I don't have much, but what little I have, I will share with you. That's that's that cultural responsive re reaction to that sort of thing. And, and you know, there's so many examples in Indian country of us trying to contend with uh, uh, some of this animosity and, 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 and stuff that 
that we're dealt with just because we're different. And, and again, it, it's hard because again, we don't argue about uh, people's uh, way of belief, but we do speak to the reality of the negative effects it may or may not have had on our people. And uh, uh, we wish that they could take both the good out of both of these things. And, and in the way we believe, there's nothing but good there. We, we, we're just so free-spirited because it's not dogmatic. We don't tell anybody how to live, but we just live and let live sort of a thing. But yet at the same time, with a lot of respect and high regard, because we're wishing to maintain the integrity of who we are as the Kota, Lakota, and Nakota people. And in respect to that, we want to develop a, a way of life that is uh, beneficial in managing and taking care of Mother Earth. Oh, man, let me get a hallelujah. Brother. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, so what do you think, nephew? Oh, that was, uh, that was dandy. That was good. Thank you for sharing. Um, let's see what else here? There was a few different things that you touched on them, but I, in case there's any brand new listeners, brand new students that are tuning in or whatever, we just want to make sure that they're, they're welcome. And I know you always, that's one of our, our main things, customary is that we want to provide spaces for our students to feel welcome and engage us. So definitely you're welcome uh, to follow us here every week. We try to be here. Um, the other thing I think is super important, uh, kind of reminded of again, so say for example, a few weeks ago, we went to a language conference. So that was pretty cool. We got to help Earl present. I was like the, the IT guy and then actually Tommy went up there and was like uh, slayed him with his indigenous <laughs> humor and man, had, had him just eaten out of the palm of his hand and then segued well into uh, the presentation by Earl and there was a, a cool video like a four or five minute video that we had in there and by, um, by Mr. Neil deGrasse he did all this this filming during this workshop so so it went over really well so that was really cool then I after that I went to uh, go in and, and the next day or the next couple of days later, but we went and listened to it. some elders speak their language. So that was really cool. And then what I noticed was we talked about a little bit earlier today was I think that it's really cool to watch how like indigenous organizations, how they kind of maneuver in like a Washichu uh, like a uh, system, I guess. And so like during this, this conference, I noticed they had to have their structure, right? We all have to fit into the structure with agendas and all this stuff, right? And so I was listening to these these old people going, and sometimes you get the we we talk together, man. Nina wohda kapi, really oh, oh. talking, visiting, good man. And so and that was cool, but sometimes uh, that that time space relationship isn't the same. There isn't always you know on times. So what I noticed is they. They went way past their time that was allotted on the yeah. agenda. And then there was another elder there that was that came over from a long ways. He wasn't able to speak because the other individuals, they they just talked long and that was it was okay, you know. But like I noticed that the people that were organizing it, they did not want to interrupt the the elders speaking. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that they would rather that would be like blasphemous, you know. <laughs> so it it was it was interesting, and, I, and I'm really hoping that people when they, if they want to um, learn their culture and engage with um, the culture in whatever setting is that they, they kind of learn from those type of things and just learn to listen a little bit more. And, and I think uh, that was one of my key takeaways. And then for our students here, you know, it's, it's a tightrope. Like sometimes you have to, in academia, you're, you're rewarded for uh, being like, I think the term is like a gunner. Uh, when you, you rush to the, the center of the room and you're, blurting out answers and interrupting people sometimes we have to kind of balance that out with listening so that's kind of like one of those things that i always try to uh be aware of and uh to be uh, culturally responsive and have cultural literacy so those are those terms i heard you talking responsiveness that's why we kind of designed this this way and we got earl and yourself to kind of help us out with that and this blending of technology I'm always trying to grapple with this, right? Like, so we have technology that enables us to do this, which is Nina Cho, man. We can really just kind of visit. Oh, yeah, hello. yeah, like uh, Dexter Earl was over in Fargo or someplace, Bismarck, kind of stopped by one of his Koda's house and he got on. And so 
that was cool to just kind of watch him do that. But in, in visiting with other people, you know, even some about my age, like we don't want to be too us. We don't want to be too um, reliant on that, right? Zoom too much. We still want to go face to face and visit, but all this COVID stuff, man, really throwing a wrench in it. But, um, but that's definitely part of our plan is to uh, mix up the, our Zoom with our, our face to face visits and, and continue to have those relationships with um, our, our families, relatives, especially elders. So, um, and then another thing I wanted to mention um, last week, we did have a archery bow making workshop, which was really yeah. cool. Um, you guys can check us out on Facebook. We posted a few um, photos of the participants. Like we had old uh, Sam Red Star. Trini showed up. Trini, uh, yeah, right on. Yeah. Made a bow man in a in a good way. And then Luan Pearl who was there was several of them. And so that was really cool to watch them. Uh, and it wasn't about just making the bow. Sometimes when you get together, just like when we we made the drum, man, it was like sure we all got together, we got to learn to make the drum, but it was that that Wokanog. And it was visit, kind of yeah. visiting yeah. and kind of laughing around. And, yeah. you know, some people kind of stew, right, when you get together. But man, <laughs> by the end of the second, third day, uh, we, we made, uh, yeah, yeah made, made good relationships with people. So I already got people asking us when we're going to do another workshop like that. Oh, so, so stay throw. tuned. You know, some of this, we're, we're rolling with it. We have some grant funding. We're also on the lookout for other opportunities. So if you have any ideas on what you want to do, to date, we've done drum making. Quilling, that's more of like a wea activity, but we want to mix those in too, right? Have yeah, yeah. stuff for the wechashas and stuff for the uh, the weas. And then we're always looking for master artists that have cultural content and knowledge um, to do hands-on physical, like cultural things. So if, if you feel like that's something that you're interested in, let us know here on the podcast, uh, shoot us an email, uh, give us a phone call, let us know, and then we'll do our best to have these workshops whatever they are quarterly every other month. Uh, so that way we can engage our community a little bit better and increase our cultural literacy for our community members. So can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah, nephew. Uh. All right. Anything else, Dexy? Are we you good? Know, just, just real quickly, um, uh, you know, it's important that we understand, like it was good to see Chris Eaglehawk and Richard uh, Charging Eagle down there. We had a good oh, visit with them. We teased with them and and again, as formal and as, as wise as they are, oh, man, didn't they treat us good? They treated oh, us well. Oh, man, I got, I got lucky. I got to sit and visit with them at the front yeah, a little bit. Yeah, them yeah. and Earl, uh, you know, and Nina, Wohadaka, they were just telling oh, jokes, and it was kind of cool to just listen to them uh, visit and, them. And you see, that, that's what we, we got to get used to is, like, I've known Chris for years, and I've known, I did done Paolo's Richard and, and Chris as well, and so those are my buddies, but I just wanted you guys to recognize our relationship in spite of all the wisdom they have and the respect that they're due. They're just common folk, man. Oh, that was just a, a really a, a good time. So I was glad I got to see them because uh, I know my buddy Chris, he just recently uh, lost his son and he's going through that process of Chante Yoksicha. But uh, again, he was there in spite of his own personal agendas and going on in his life. He, he come and he helped out, eh? And so again, uh, they had uh, Robert Tukro down there that is very knowledgeable. Said the prayer, opening prayer, very very beautiful prayer, and all in Lakota. And oh man, it just it was just a good gathering. Although I didn't get to, and I visited some folks from uh, Moose Woods, uh, uh, from up there, Frank Royal and his wife, and uh, there was another counselor there that uh, I got to visit with from Canada, and they came down. They were worried about rapid testing and getting back across the border. And, so I got to visit with them a little bit, but I didn't want to visit too much because of the COVID thing. So, but it really went well. And I just want to thank Elijah for setting us up and hooking us up for, for getting together like that. So we can all experience the importance of that. And thank you. Thank you, Toshka. Oh, oh, I gave myself another round of applause. <laughs> right on, guys. Look shark. Hey, 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 hey,
Bye. Bye.